Hi, I'm Laura Cuneo, Director of Counseling here at Chaminade. Our counseling team has put together a short film that chronicles what each st student should be doing um, at each grade level. Today you're going to be hearing from Ingrid Valentine, Kaylee Bryden, and Scott Borchard. We hope you find this really helpful and can use it um, along the way this year as a resource. Thank you all for watching. Hi, I'm Mrs. Valentine and we'll be starting off with our ninth graders. Um, this is a huge adjustment for your students, um, not only starting high school, but actually getting to be back on campus for the first time in over a year. Um, so we want to make sure that we're giving them that time and space to adjust, um, get to know their friends again, get to know their teachers, just really getting back in the swing of being on campus every day. Um, this is a great time to start good academic habits, things like checking your email every day, going to X-Block, um, emailing your teachers, meeting with your counselors, lots of emails coming out from our department, um, just wanting to make sure that they stay on top of everything. And really, our goal is to help them not only acclimate, but really start to maintain that balance. So yes, we want them to challenge their, themselves with um, classes and honors, things like that. But we also want them to have time to spend time with their friends, to get involved in clubs, get involved with their sports, um, try something new. So all of that is a lot for them to think about right now, especially given this new world that they've entered. So we're here for them. We want them to come talk with us. Um, we will sit down and help them map out and look at that four-year plan. Um, start thinking about what they might want to take as 10th graders, but again, not wanting them to stress out right now. We will definitely help them in the spring go through their classes and pick what they want to do. Um, college, we are a college prep school, so we're going to start talking to them about college early on, but little bits at a time. Again, not wanting them to be super stressed out, but just letting them know all the information that is out there. Um, there will be lots of virtual college fairs this year. Hopefully you've already seen those emails and we will continue posting them on Blackboard and letting them know. Um, we want them to start getting familiar with Naviance. Up until now, it's really been where they've logged their service hours, but there's a whole college portion of Naviance we want them to start getting familiar with um, because it's something we use a lot as they get older and especially senior year with the college applications. There's a great resume portion on there that they can start um, because it sounds funny, but by the time we sit down as seniors, it's really hard to remember what you were doing as a freshman. So if you have that all down, it makes, again, the college application process so much easier when you know everything that you did and it's already all written down for you. 10th graders, moving on to 10th graders. So again, a lot of the same stuff we want to maintain that balance. 10th grade is the first time that they are able to take an AP class and we definitely want to be able to talk with them about that. So meet with your counselor um, in the spring about looking to increase the rigor of your classes and thinking about those 11th grade courses too. Again, that four-year plan, we'll go over that with you every time. Um, a lot of times we'll hear from our students that, you know, gr these grades don't count, but don't believe that they absolutely do colleges do look at everything so you always want to keep that focus on your grades and you know do the best you can always college planning we will continue to do as we do every year um, a little bit more with Naviance continue to update that resume this year we will be doing our college kickoff um, most likely virtual, but we will let you know for sure, be the early part of November. That's a great opportunity to listen to all the different types of schools that come out and talk with you, um, ask questions, and just start thinking about you know college. It seems really far away, but comes sooner than we realize. Um, just a few things to think about with college, you know, where you might wanna go as far as location, what type of school, um, the size, do you want a little school, do you want a big school, the majors they may or may not have for you. Um, and again, those virtual college fairs and tours, we're hoping that in the spring, depending on how everything is, we can start our own college tours up again where we will go and take the students to different campuses. Um, and 
vacations are a great time as a family if you want to be able to visit different colleges and you know if you're already somewhere and a school happens to be close by just being able to get on campus um, and just see what that feels like again with all this we always want to think about well-being of our students so again that balance is going to be super important um, making sure that they still have time to be kids enjoy their friends enjoy their time get a little bit of downtime as well um, and take care of themselves you know make sure they're getting enough sleep eating all the things they need to do to be healthy and academically successful hi there i'm mrs bryden and i'm going to be covering the junior year for your students and what they should be doing now so junior year can have a lot of built up stress around it i think because students are usually taking on more rigor and they're looking at college applications the next year. And that doesn't need to be the case because we really are setting up your students for success all the way from freshman, sophomore, to junior year. So in the fall, what we like to emphasize is that your student is taking, your students are taking classes that are increasing in rigor, but only in classes that they feel strong in. We wanna make sure that they're not overextending their, themselves to an unhealthy amount, but that they are taking on more rigor to prove to colleges that they can handle tough classes and that they can succeed, okay? The other thing that we wanna make sure that they're doing is starting to, to further their contributions to the community. So if they got involved in some clubs as a freshman or sophomore, we want to see them devoting more time in the clubs that they're most interested in and, and diving more into their passions and potentially taking on leadership positions in those, in those clubs and activities. Um, we also have some really great tools on Naviance for them to be looking at major or career interests. Um, and, and that's available on Naviance through the self-discovery section and definitely something that you can have your student look over with their counselor. Um, parents also have a portal on Naviance and if you have trouble accessing that, you can reach out to your individual counselor as well. In the, in the spring of junior year, we wanna make sure that academics are staying strong, um, that students are building really strong relationships with their teachers, especially because these are going to be the teachers that your students are going to be asking for recommendations when they're applying as seniors. Uh, we will also be working with your students individually on selecting the best senior courses for them. And we are offering junior workshops um, throughout the spring and those dates are gonna be um, announced later. But a lot of the times they focus on getting started with um, college list building or uh, working on college essays, things like that. So keep an eye out on the CTW and in announcements there. Um, and then we ask that students look for some summer opportunities that are important to them, um, maybe where they can uh, enrich uh, some interests that they have. Some students will take classes um, through a junior college, other students will get a job, um, some students will you know, take up a new hobby or look for an internship. So there's a lot of different things that are available. And we usually have a, a college connection just dedicated to the summer. Now in the college aspect for juniors, which this is probably the year that we start to emphasize college the most, um, is we want your students really starting to familiarize themselves with campuses that they can realistically see themselves at. The only way that they can do this is by either getting on campuses or starting to investigate them through virtual tours or by meeting with the representatives that come to our campus every second lunch period. So this fall we have almost a hundred schools visiting our campus uh, our campus that that are coming with they are college representatives who actually read your students' uh, applications when they apply to schools. And it's a great resource for your students to come and ask them questions about majors, about applications, about the location, the city. It's a really great opportunity to get one-on-one -on -one attention from a college rep. Um, and then we also have events like the college kickoff which is scheduled for November 9th, but at, at the college kickoff, we invite those college reps to come and speak to our families. And um, we also will potentially have a hosted college tour 
Um, we've done so in the past and we're hoping to be able to do that again. Now on Naviance for your juniors, what's really important is for them to start putting down schools in their colleges, I'm thinking about list. We really want students going into summer to have at least five schools that they really see themselves applying to in the fall. If your students are having trouble narrowing that down, please have them discuss this with their counselor. It's something that we're going to bring up to them um, in their meetings with us as well. Now the other major topic that we typically discuss during the junior year is testing. And that that's typically been the most emphasized discussion when we got to junior year, especially in the fall. But it's been changing, and I'm sure most of you are aware of that. A lot of schools are either test optional or test blind, meaning schools might consider scores, and some schools won't even look at the scores at all. And that's the SAT or the ACT. Now it's really up to a family and a student to see if a test a standardized test is appropriate for that student and their college path. Um, that is something that's very individual and should be discussed with the student's counselor. Um, overall, if your student is a very strong test taker and your student thinks that they will perform really well, maybe they've taken some diagnostic tests like the ones that we have on testing day, which I'll talk about in a sec, but if they are a really strong test taker, it might help in their college process. If your student isn't the best test taker, what's really great now is test optional is a highly sought after path. And that's something we can discuss even further in your personal meetings with your counselor. Um, testing day this year is October 13th and we have a test for 9th graders, 10th graders, and 11th graders. So 9th grade is a PSAT 8-9, 10th grade is a pre-ACT, and 11th grade is the PSAT. What's great about this it gives your student data points to see how well they do on exams. And if your student is scoring really well on these practice exams, that helps inform our decision when working with your student. So if you have more questions on testing, we can definitely talk about that a little more one-on-one. -on -one. Hi everyone, Scott Borchard here. I just wanted to now talk with you about senior year and kind of what the expectations can be of what's gonna be happening during the senior year. Uh, what they should be doing, when they should be doing things, and then also I want, I'm going to talk about what your role is as a parent with your seniors. Uh, so where I want to start first is talking about college applications, okay? That is always going to be the biggest subject that comes up uh, as seniors are heading into the fall. And so where we like to start is the college application list. For us, when we're working with seniors, the list is the most important thing. Once we have a list finalized, everything else kind of comes into play. Uh, we're able to figure out deadlines, we're able to figure out which applications they need to complete, how many letters of rec they might need, yada yada. Okay, but we can't do that until we know what schools they are definitely going to be applying to. At this point, as a senior in the fall, we want to make sure that their list is completed or nearly completed, meaning finalized, they're not going to add any more, maybe they want to add one more safety or something like that, but the list should be pretty much done. Uh, once we have that, then we can start talking about like, hey, did you do testing? You know, do we need to strategize about your, your testing and where you're going to be sending test scores? Because the reality is, is that they might have gotten a great score for one school, but if you're applying to maybe a REACH school or something like that, maybe it's not a great score, maybe you don't want to send it there. So one of the things is we want to make sure that we strategize with them. If they want to still take tests, there is time to do that. October, November, December, all of those months have ACT and SAT. Uh, December is going to be the latest date that we would suggest that they're taking it. Typically after that, colleges are not going to be taking that score because it's too late for them. They need to make their decisions prior to those scores coming in. And majority of colleges, like was mentioned earlier, the majority of colleges are remaining test optional this year. Uh, there are a lot of test blind schools, all the Cal States, all the UCs, they are test blind. They are not even allowing you to submit those scores for admissions purposes. Then we want to talk about the personal statement, insight questions. You know, these should be a work in progress. Uh, you know, over the summer, we were hoping that maybe they did some pre-writing. Uh, in our meetings, we we're always asking them, hey, what is, what's your topic? You know, what are you going to be writing about? And we try to explore with them what that essay is looking like. You know, how far along have you gotten? Have you gotten a rough draft done? Uh, you know, do we need to take a look at it? Do you want your English teachers to take a look at it, proofread it a little bit? 
Uh, all of that is stuff that they should be currently working on. If they haven't started, we need to get them started on that. Uh, we wanna make sure that when it comes to the essay, this is replacing the interview for the most part. Most schools don't have interviews. So this is the student's opportunity to really communicate how they are and who they are as a person. And what we always encourage them to do is to make sure it's in their own voice, All right? We have a lot of students that tend to get extra help when it comes to the essays. And you gotta be careful with that. When you have other adults putting a lot of input into the essay, you start losing the student's voice in that. And the, the college reps can see that, we can see that when we read those essays, so it's really important that the student's voice is the loudest in there, okay? We wanna make sure that with applications that they're making progress, so specifically about the Common App, that is going to be one of the more frequent applications we see. We wanna make sure that they're registered, that they're working on the application and the supplements. So in addition to the main essay in the Common App, a lot of the schools on the Common App will have supplemental questions that we wanna make sure the students are aware of and that they're working towards. We wanna make sure that recommendations, so if they're applying to a Common App school, the good, there's a good chance that they need at least one, maybe two teacher recommendations. And we wanna make sure that they're talking to the teachers about that. We don't want them just sending an email and saying, hey, will you write this? No, we wanna make sure they're talking in person. And there's gonna be certain teachers that might be better for them than others. So that's a conversation we wanna make sure we're having with the students. All right, so we break this down a little bit more. Uh, what should your seniors do next? So we're in October right now. It's really important that they realize if they're applying to Cal State schools, that application opened on October 1st. And that application is pretty short. That is something that they can quickly get through in usually 45 minutes to an hour. Uh, we wanna make sure that they're continuing to work on the UC applications, the, the Common App applications. October 1st was also when financial aid opened up, so the FAFSA. Uh, that is something that opened up on the first end. We would encourage you to complete that sooner rather than later. And we're gonna talk a little bit more about financial aid in a little bit here, but just know that in October, that's a great time to submit that, that documentation. We wanna make sure that seniors are keeping grades strong. You know, so when they're applying to schools, they obviously don't have their senior year grades, but that doesn't mean that these senior year grades are not gonna be important to colleges. Depending on when they're applying, some schools might want 10 week grades. Some schools, a lot of the Common App schools are gonna want mid-year transcripts where it'll show them how the student did in that first semester. And if they did poorly or different than how they've done in the past, that could jeopardize their admission to schools. So we wanna make sure that they're keeping up with their grades, they're doing everything they can to, to be successful in the classroom. And we wanna make sure that in December they have, like I was mentioning, the draft of those essays, making sure that they're making progress on those. When we get to November, that's when you're gonna be submitting your applications for the Cal States, for the UCs. Both of those have a deadline on November 30th. You will see with some of the Cal States, they have extended that to like a December 4th, uh, but a good rule of thumb is get that in by the 30th. And make sure that you're, they're doing it ahead of time, not on the 30th. Every year, we, we see the systems crash. So we wanna make sure that they're doing that a few days before, a week before, but that way they're not gonna have the stress and anxiety of like, oh my goodness, the system crashed, how am I gonna get this in? You can avoid that just by getting it in a little bit early. All right, make sure you're paying attention to those early deadlines. Uh, there are some schools across the country that if you are applying early, might have an October 15th deadline. The vast majority will have a November 1st if there's early action or early decision. There are some November 15th and then December 1st. You wanna make sure in November they're finishing up any of those testings, especially if you're applying early. Um, when they get a chance after they've worked on these applications, searching for scholarships. And I'm gonna go a little bit more into depth about how to do that in a, in a slide here or two. Uh, by November 12th, request recommendations for regular deadlines in January, so making sure that they're giving teachers and counselors ample time to write these letters of rec. You gotta remember that a lot of times teachers are writing these letters of rec outside of school hours, right? So when they're on campus, they're teaching, they're grading, they're doing things like that. So when they're writing letters of rec, it's outside of school hours, and we wanna make sure that they get those done before the holidays. We want the teachers to enjoy the holiday, okay? Uh, make sure transcripts have been requested in Naviance. So not all schools are gonna requ require transcripts, so it's important for the students to be talking with us about which schools do require transcripts and how to request those. And it's pretty easy to do in Naviance. If you go in there and you just 
click on the colleges, it'll say manage transcripts. And you just go there and that's where you'll be able to request those. And again, anytime you or the students have questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We have no problems meeting with you guys. Now we have the ability to do the Zoom meetings, you know, so if you can't make it on campus, that's okay. Uh, we can do Zoom meetings, we can talk through email, whatever it is, we're happy to help out. But we encourage you to have your students do the primary communication and if something else comes up, then you're more than welcome to reach out to us. When we get to December, you're really finalizing those applications. Uh, those applications that are regular decision are typically going to be in December or in January. You know, we would love for you all to enjoy, you know, the Christmas holiday. Uh, so we would encourage you to try to get those applications done prior to us going on break, because you have to remember if questions come up during the break, there's not going to be people around to ask those questions to and get those answers. So work ahead of time if you can, so that you can enjoy the break and come back and submit those applications. And we want to make sure that students are following up with teachers and counselors regarding recommendations. You know, I encourage my students a lot of times that as it gets closer to just send out an email and say, you know, thank you again, Mrs. So-and-so for agreeing to write my letter. You know, uh, I appreciate it. If you have any questions, please let me know. And again, my first deadline is January 1st. Okay, that's a great way to kind of follow up with teachers to make sure that there's nothing else that they need. Um, and then throughout the entire process, we can't stress enough the importance of checking emails. You know, making sure that, you know, if we have questions while we're writing our letters of rec, we're probably gonna reach out via email or try to have them schedule an appointment via email. Um, colleges, when they're starting to submit paperwork and everything, make sure that they're checking because if a school reaches out and says, hey, we haven't gotten your transcript, or hey, you didn't submit this, they're gonna be reaching out through email or the portals that they're gonna create, but it's important that students are taking the responsibility to check this daily, okay? Um, make sure that they're being in touch with the counselor. If they're hearing back from colleges, we wanna hear. If there's something that needs to be sus submitted, let us know. But we wanna make sure that they're continuing to stay in touch with us even after they've uh, submitted all their applications. So I do wanna to talk to you a little bit about financial aid. Again, I had mentioned the FAFSA. You'll see uh, on the slide that we have here the links to different to the FAFSA, to the CSS profile, the Cal Grant. So again, the FAFSA is something we encourage all families to do. Even if you feel like you're not going to qualify, we would encourage you to do it. With a lot of schools, you can't get any type of scholarship or grant unless you fill out that FAFSA. So we would encourage you to do that. The CSS profile is going to be re required by some private schools. If you go to their website, it's gonna tell you exactly which schools require that, that profile. Um, it's just another way for them to gain information and, and decide what, app, uh, what scholarships or grants your student might be eligible for. The Cal Grant is gonna be for any student that is applying to California schools, whether that's public or private. Um, we go ahead and automatically submit grade verification. That's gonna be something you see, but if you see that, we submit that automatically for all of our students as a school. All right, the Western Undergraduate Exchange of WUI, that's a great place to go if you're looking for maybe some financial safety schools. Uh, these are typically smaller schools uh, from about Montana to the West, where if they meet certain criteria, they can go to school there for near in-state tuition. But that is a great option if you're looking at, you know, schools that you wanna kind of fill that financial safety slot. And because financial aid is so confusing and none of the counselors claim to be financial experts, we bring in a financial expert to help answer some of these questions and educate you more on this sometimes very confusing part of the college admissions process. Uh, but you can see here, she's gonna, she has done presentations for us in the past um, and she is amazing. So please join us for that event. I do wanna talk a little bit about scholarships. There are a number out there. There are thousands and thousands of scholarships out there. Um, and what we try to do is to provide those links for the students to go on, create the profiles, and get started in this process. Uh, so if you go to the Students Counseling Blackboard page and you go to the college information, we have a, links to FastWeb, RaiseMe, Going Mary, uh, Merit-Based Scholarships, and, and some other ones as well. Uh, if you go to the Naviance tab, in, in, in Naviance you go there and you go to the Scholarships tab, any new scholarships that we hear about, we post on there and it breaks it down to how much they are, what is required to apply, everything like that. 
Uh, FastWeb is a great place to go. You go in there, you create kind of a profile and it searches the database for you. And then you just decide whether or not you wanna apply for those scholarships. And then Raise.me and Going Mary, again, great options for you uh, to get some extra money when it comes to college. So I do wanna take a little bit at the end here to kind of talk about what we would hope your role is as a parent. You know, what we can't stress enough is that you wanna be your, your student's biggest cheerleader. You wanna encourage them, um, not just, you know, say you have to do this, you have to do this, but you wanna encourage them. You know, encourage them to take ownership over this process. Don't just take it over for them. That doesn't help them. You know, they're the students that are applying to the schools. They're gonna be the ones going to college. So it's important for them to take over ownership of this process. We wanna make sure that you're having discussions with your students about balance and priorities when they're searching for college. You know, do they want to have a high academic school or, do, or, or are they prioritizing other options that are important to them and that you want to make sure you're stressing as well? Uh, you know, don't let the conversation take over your guys' lives. You know, don't start talking about college the second they get in the car uh, or, or whatnot. Don't trap them into that, but maybe make a weekly time that you guys are going to have a check-in, you know, hey, Sunday at four o'clock every week, we're just gonna have a check-in. I wanna see how you're doing with your applications. I wanna see if there's any people that you need to make appointments with this week to get some extra help. You know, that can go a long ways in, in supporting your student during this process. And we will also wanna encourage you to have the students research the schools, right? They have to decide if this is gonna be a good fit for them. And although it might be hard to get out there and see colleges in person these days, they, all these schools have dumped tons of money into their virtual tours. So, you know, make sure you take advantage of that. Actually see the school and learn a little bit about it. But I think that that's really important in helping the students figure out what's gonna be a great fit for them. And you know, and I just wanna take time to thank you guys all for tuning in and watching our presentation here. As always, the counselors are willing and able to help in any way that we can. Just please don't ever hesitate to reach out and talk with us. Thank you.